but, um, but I actually got really excited. I love coming to Biola. I love the students here. I loved my time working here. And I thought about the fact that summer's coming up and you guys are gonna probably be heading into summer employment, summer camp, summer ministry stuff. Um, and so I thought it might be fun to take a little bit of time and talk about gifting and calling and kind of prepping you for the summer. We'll just keep it a little bit light because finals are coming. I just wanna say on the front end too, for those of you cramming right now for finals, I forgive you for ignoring me while I'm talking. Um, but I wanna find out, how many of you already have your summer plans set? How many of you know what you're gonna be doing? And like about 800 of you, good job. How many of you have no idea? You're just hoping, yeah, that would have been me. Um, so as you're thinking through your plans, I thought it would just be kinda, um, kinda good to look at it through the lens of gifting. Look at it through the lens of call, look at it through the lens, just a little bit of a spiritual eyesight. And so let me pray for us as we do that and then we'll get into it, okay? Lord, I just thank you for each person here. I do pray for them as they head into finals that you would give them peace and you would help them remember anything they read that's gonna show up on a test. Um, and Lord, I do pray that as they launch into summer and start heading into just a different pace of life, that you'd bless them in that and that you'd show up for them in the ways that they need to hear your voice and experience your presence and enjoy community. And so Lord, I just ask that you lead our time together. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Um, one of the things that I had an opportunity to do um, is work here as an RD, and then I've worked at a couple churches. And in the course of doing that, I've actually had to do quite a bit of hiring and um, do a lot of oversight of different staff. And when I was younger, um, I was in a particular situation where I had inherited a group of people that I did not hire. And inheriting that group of people, um, what I began to see kind of quickly is several of these people I probably would not have put into the positions that they were in. Um, and I was in a little bit of a dilemma because they were very nice people, but they didn't seem to be quite the right fit for the job. And at this particular point, I was a fairly new RD, and so most of you know what an RA does, right? Um, and I had a couple people who admittedly behind scenes told me, um, I don't really like people but I'm an RA. And I was like, can you, you guys check in with the dilemma I'm in here? Do you think it's helpful to like people if you're an RA? Probably, right? Um, and so I was like, what am I gonna do? And it was actually one of the better crises that I ever came into in a job. Because what it forced me to do was really pay attention to who these people were and really pay attention to what they're gifting was and how we were gonna use that to build community. And one person in particular really was extremely shy. I actually had two people that were extremely shy and uncomfortable in groups of people, and uncomfortable meeting with the people on their floor. Um, and what I started, I really ended up starting to pray about this. Lord, what am I gonna do? They, these are not people that should be fired. They're nice people, they're kind people, but I don't know what to do. And I really began to feel at that point, the Lord said, I just want you to open your eyes. Just open your eyes and open your ears and pay attention to who they are and how they're wired and what they bring. And what I noticed is one of these people in particular was an incredibly gifted artist. Very, very gifted artist. And so we made a pack, we agreed kind of behind the scenes, like, hey, I'm not gonna really make you get out there a ton with the people, but your job now for the entire year is to do all of our advertising. You're gonna do all our artwork and all of our advertising. And this person was thrilled, I was happy, and what they started doing is they were really great at illustration and they were very clever on paper and they started making all our posters, all of our flyers, etc. And they were so good at it that all of their artwork was stolen by the students and put up in their rooms. And I was like, this is awesome. So because this person was such a great artist, they were creating so much buzz about our events. And so while our events normally were not well, that well attended, we were up in bluff housing and it was upperclassmen, this person was able to create a buzz that our normal posters did not create. I had another person who was incredibly shy, but um, we did a lot, you know, we always bribe you with food 
to come to our events. You know how that goes. Um, and this person was an incredibly good cook and an incredibly good baker. And so what I asked her to do is I'm like, I'm not gonna push you out there with the people, but I want you to take care of the food for all of the events. This is not usually how you do it. Usually you make everybody rotate. And I don't know what she, I don't know if she prayed over her food. I don't know if she had magic dust in her food. I don't know what she did. But it was so good that people would come to the events. They would want to show up. And sometimes they'd just steal a couple cookies and run back to their room. But at least they came down and we got a chance to see them. And what I learned um, in that is to really respect and honor that God has given us gifts not to just meet one dimension of life, but in the way that we are gifted spiritually and in the way that we're designed to build up the body of Christ and work together, we're really designed to meet a variety of gifts. We are designed according to scripture and gifted to meet the spiritual needs of others. But if you think about it, we're designed to meet the physical needs of others. We care for the orphan and the widow. We don't just pray for them. We physically do things for them. We're designed to care for the emotional needs of others. Compassion, comfort, care are important parts of the body of Christ and us being unified. We are designed to meet the intellectual needs of others. And we are designed to care for each other in a relational capacity and meet the relational needs. And each one of us are wired in a way to meet those needs. Each one of us is wired in a way to build up the body of Christ. If you look at what scripture says in Ephesians chapter four, the purpose of our spiritual gifts is to build one another up. That honors and glorifies God. If we look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14, part of our gifts are to unify through the spirit but it's also to create maturity. We're designed to help each other mature. And so what I wanna do is spend a little bit of time unpacking some of that and a little bit of time talking about how that might relate to you. So one of the important things is to understand what some of the gifts are, and I'll throw them out just a list, but apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers, those with gift of healing, prophecy, discernment, tongues, service, exhortation, giving, leading, mercy, wisdom, knowledge, faith, faith, or faith, faith, healing, and mercy. Those are some of the gifts. And I know at Biola there's some debate about um, gifts that continue and cessationism, etc. but at the end of the day in scripture, these are the gifts that are listed. And so at some point, these are some things that you will each participate in, and you will each um, benefit the body of Christ in doing. And what I wanna talk about is how to start learning what your gifts are, how to start paying attention to that. Um, you are getting to the age where your ability to self-reflect and your ability to be objective about yourself is increasing. Before you're about 19 years old, it's a little bit harder for people to self-reflect. It's a little bit harder for people to be objective about their self, themselves. But as you get older, you're able to step outside of yourself a little bit and understand yourself a little more clearly. You're also able to understand other people a little bit more clearly. So you're right in that kind of beginning stage of paying attention. And one of the things that it's gonna be important for you to pay attention to in terms of your giftedness is what comes natural and what comes easily to you. What comes natural and what comes easily to you. I don't know what your generation hears. My generation tended to hear if something was difficult and hard and you didn't like it, that was God's thing for you to do. Do you guys tend to hear that? I don't know what you hear. But for you guys, I want you to know, if God's given you something to do, if he has wired you a certain way, it will come unusually and naturally easily for you. And that should be an indication to you that that's something to invest in and it's something to develop in yourself. It's something to pay attention to. If you hear people tell you, man, you are so good at that. I can't do that. I'm not good at that. That is a really important thing to perk your ears up to and start paying attention to. 
I know a lot of artists. How many of you can draw? Just, it's the funniest group of people because almost nobody admits it. Does that mean? And you see someone draw something really well. How many of you can't draw? Let me ask you that. See, we're honest. We really cannot draw. <laughs> right? So, but someone can draw and it's so easy for them and it's so natural that they don't realize it's a talent. They don't realize it's a skill. If you cannot draw, you absolutely know it's a talent and a skill, right? How many of you can do math? I don't get you at all. You make no sense to me. I feel like there's parts of my brain, like verbal parts of my brain and parts of me that think everything is funny. Those parts of my brain are like huge. And then the part of my brain that does math or spatial things is like a raisin. It's just dried up, doesn't make any sense. Um, for you, it's important that you start recognizing that that wiring isn't something that we all get. If you can sing, you actually have a beautiful voice. If you can sing, we don't all get to do that. We don't all get to do these things, but you get to do them. And you get to do them because God delighted in giving you that ability. He enjoys that you have an aspect of his character, you carry an aspect of his nature. And he likes that. And each one of us gets an opportunity to carry an aspect and a part of his nature. As I got older, one of the things I found out that was a little bit unique to my personality or to my wiring is if you tell me a story about yourself, I will probably remember it. Did anybody see the movie Rain Man? Anybody know that movie? And so it's somebody who always remembers numbers. I am the opposite of that. As soon as a number is inserted into something, my brain freezes completely. But if you tell me a story about your life, I don't even have to work at it, I'm gonna remember it. I remember going back to my 20th high school reunion and asking people like, well, hey, how's your grandma? What happened with that story that you told me 25 years ago? Um, and what I learned as I got older was what one of the things the Lord impressed on me is he gave me that ability because in that one way, I get to reflect the fact that God sees you and remembers you. He does not forget who you are. He doesn't walk away and forget. I don't really have to work super hard at that ability. So I learned that's an important function in my part of the body of Christ, is when I interact with people, if I can remember this, how much more can the Lord remember this? I am finite and I am limited, and I don't do it perfectly. But if I can do it, how much more can the Lord do it? And whatever gift you've been given, whether it's creativity, a certain type of intelligence, a certain type of mercy, a certain type of compassion, and it's unique and it's strong and it comes easily to you, that's the Lord showing the body of Christ what he's like. Don't squelch that. Let that be developed. He is wise, he is kind, he is discerning, he is insightful, he's full of miraculous power. He's every form of goodness and intelligence. And in whatever way you reflect that, let that reflect brightly. Don't squelch that. Don't shut that down. So start paying attention. Ask the Lord to lead you. Ask him what he's given you. Ask him what is unique to you and how he wants you to use that. The difficulty in using your spiritual gift should not be that the task or the activity is difficult, okay? So when you're using your gifts, there should be an ease to it. What I've observed a lot of times in the church is we so value teaching and we so value pastoral work that we kind of communicate that's the only really important stuff. And it's sometimes the only stuff we actually train people in. So we have a lot of people trying to gravitate toward those ministries or toward those gifts, even when those things are difficult for them to do. It's difficult for them to teach or it's difficult for them to communicate. If it's difficult to do the task, then it's probably not totally in your gifting. Doesn't mean you should never do it, but it's probably not your unique gifting. 
The only time, in my opinion, that gifting should, you should experience some difficulties are times when your character is being checked and tested. In other words, let's say you are a good teacher and somebody else in your body or in your congregation or in your community steps up and they're also a good teacher. What might you experience? You might feel threatened, you might feel jealous, you might feel tempted to squash them and make sure they don't get the microphone. Why? Because it would take attention away from you. Now your giftedness is experiencing some discomfort and some testing, but it's your character. You're actually still good at this, but you might feel uncomfortable with someone else. God, in my experience, will absolutely let you sit in that discomfort because he wants you to see this as something not used for your own glory, but used to build up the whole body. A lot of people will have the same gifts you have. And part of maturing is creating space and celebrating that we share these gifts, we all carry this load, and ultimately this is for the life-giving purpose of building up the body of Christ. Is everyone tracking with that? You also might experience some discomfort as you exercise your gifts when you're pressed to take risks or you feel like you're in the deep end. This is harder than you thought. You're working in your giftedness, but this is harder than you thought. Those are important things to sit in. You should not abandon your gift because you're in a difficult situation. I do pastoral counseling. A lot of times people come in and I feel pretty confident about the direction we're gonna go in. I feel pretty good about the whole thing, but every once in a while someone shows up and they share something with me and my thought is, you need a professional. Like I don't, you know, and I'm looking around looking for somebody to help me, right? Well, who's the professional? Oops, that would be me. And so there are times, <laughs> just being honest, um, and so there are times when you will be pushed beyond your limit to reconnect you to a dependence on God. That's a really good challenge. That's when it's good to be in over your head. But I want you to hear the difference. That's different than generally every aspect of engaging in this work is hard for me. There's not a lot of fruit. There's a lot of difficulty. So when it's your giftedness, you'll experience an ease. It's gonna go pretty well. You'll see good fruit. You'll see life coming out of this thing. When instead you're experiencing chaos and it's difficult and it's challenging, that's probably not the area that you should be working in. So start paying attention to that. The other thing in terms of some of this stuff, working in your giftingness, is it's so important that you stay very connected to what God's heart is in giving us these gifts. And I've already mentioned it, it's for the building up of the body of Christ. But in that, God is the giver of life. He is filled with peace, he restores things, he makes things new, he brings the dead back to life. So he gave us gifts so that we would participate in that. I think one of the um, just bummers or challenges of our Western um, approach to ministry and to giftedness is we have made a vocation out of almost all of it and we've attached paychecks and titles to a lot of this. And in doing that, it really can put us in a place of having very mixed motives and even fear about operating in this stuff. Fear that you could lose your job, and so then you start covering up and you start hiding and you start performing and you get a little bit dis disconnected from God. But it also puts in this, kind of dangles this carrot in front of us about money and fame. I've worked for some pretty big churches and I had an opportunity in my 20s, a little bit older than you guys, to work in the Christian publishing area with authors and speakers. And I just wanna put a little check in you. Um, if where you're starting to head with your giftedness is kind of getting stars in your eyes about having your name in lights and having a big church and having your book deals, I just wanna ask you to hand that over to the Lord to lead that. That is a cultural thing 
and it's something that allows us to be disconnected from our true spiritual heart. We try or we can learn to develop a set of skills that are charming, we can learn to present ourselves in a certain way and that can be very disconnected from our true real spiritual heart and in the last few years we've seen a few pastors blow out who had pretty big ministries, pretty widespread stuff. That is a humiliating fall and that is not good for the body of Christ. And so as you're operating in your gifts, it's not about us becoming famous. It's not about us becoming rich. It's not about us getting a lot of recognition. Our giftedness is about bringing the dead back to life. Our giftedness is about bringing peace and wholeness and goodness and light and truth to a body of people. Let that be the city on the hill. What I shouldn't be doing is knocking out all the lights in your house so I'm the light on the hill. We are a city on a hill. And when we look healthy and when we are healthy, that's compelling to the world. It's important to the world. When we are filled with jealousy and insecurity and we're greedy and we, we're attention hogs, that's no different than anything else and it's not attractive. So it's really important that we stay very connected as you understand your giftedness, as you develop your giftedness, it's really important that we stay connected to the heart of God in that. And finally, it's important to pay attention to um, the other gifts of other people and get to know the people that you're serving. So as you're reflecting on your own giftedness and you're reflecting on how God has wired you, it's gonna be really important to pay attention to how God has wired the people around you. I think some of the most effective ministers I've ever worked with are people who are very clear about the giftedness of those that surround them. They learn to defer to that giftedness and they learn how to honor the gifts in another person. It is so important that you learn how to do that. Um, I mentioned that I'm no good with math. I'm actually horrible with spatial things as well. I could never get my shoes back in the box properly without trying that a couple times. And I realize that some of you are looking at me with that confession and feeling like I'm kind of dumb. Um, but I would put you in certain situations and possibly think the same thing about you, just so you know. Um, so some things that are super obvious to you um, for some reason are super challenging to me and I, I really don't know why, but I remember at one point, um, Ikea is like the biggest nightmare to me, their furniture, and um, oh my goodness. And so I tried to put something together and funnily enough, I don't know, how many of you know Danny Pascal? You guys know Danny? Great guy. His wife is very good with math and spatial things. So I put this thing together and it just, none of the doors were closing right, like nothing was working right. So I called Carrie and I'm like, Carrie, come look at this. And she walked in and immediately, and I'm dying laughing. I'm, I have no illusions. I know I'm no good at this stuff. So I have a pretty good sense of humor about it. So I'm dying laughing looking at this thing. I go, Carrie, I don't even know what I did, but I can't close any of the doors on this thing. And she immediately, I mean, she saw it and she spotted it instantly. And she was so sweet to me. We undid the whole thing and I just sat there and I went, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Like I'm, my brain is shut off now. I'm not even thinking, just instruct me. I'm your hands and feet. Um, and so she had it all worked out. And it was really important, and it's kind of a dumb analogy, but that I knew that she was superior to me in that particular situation. If I did not know that about her, and I stood over her, and I tried to tell her how to do this, how do you think that would come across? Pretty bad, right? How, how do you think she would feel? Pretty annoyed. What do you think she would think of me? She would probably think I was kind of ignorant and kind of arrogant. If I don't know who she is and how she functions and I don't respect that, it will be hard for her to respect me in return. If we enter the body of Christ and we don't understand the unique wiring of another person, 
how God has given them a unique ability to do something with ease. It is intuitive to them. It comes easily to them. And I don't see that and respect it and defer to it and let them do their thing. There's gonna be friction between us. I'm not honoring them the way God's asked me to honor them. And I'm actually hurting my own credibility. You would not respect me if I disregarded what you were good at over and over and over again. And so I, it's not just important that you see what you're good at, it's important that you understand what someone else is good at. God gave that to them. And it ultimately will benefit you as well. But if I only want my light to shine, that's gonna be a problem. But if I'm excited that God has put us all together and in being all together, good things come out of that. We're gonna see transformative, life-giving stuff happen in our community. So it's really, really important that we pay attention to what other people are good at. So as you head into your summer, as you head into some of the things that are ahead of you, I just wanna ask you to really pay attention what comes easily and what comes naturally. I want you to start looking at other people and recognize what they bring to the table. I wanna ask you to be especially vigilant about paying attention to the giftedness of people you do not naturally respect. They don't have the same gifts you have. And so it isn't necessarily very easy for you to respect them. Start paying attention to that. There may be somebody, if you are really good in one area, um, let's say we go back to the math and the science, et cetera. Um, I, this is not always the case, but it might be possible that sometimes with the nuanced things of people relationships, that might not be your easiest suit. That might not be the easiest thing for you. But you might look at someone who's terrible at engineering, terrible at math and science, and think, gosh, they're just not very bright. It's not a very sharp person. Pay attention to where they are sharp. Pay attention to where they are bright. If you have particularly good social skills, and you know how to charm a room, and you're really good with people, and you look at someone and they're not very good at that, take a step back and ask yourself, how do they reflect the image of God? What aspect of his nature is showing up in them? And honor that. It's so important in the body of Christ that we address each other and live in an honoring way with each other. So one of the things I'm gonna ask you to consider, one of the things I want you to do kind of on your own um, is to look at 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. It talks about the gifts, talks about the body of Christ. But what's so interesting about, actually if you go 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. If you took those chapter breaks out, what you're gonna find is that whole thing is about the importance of spiritual gifts, working together in unity, and really honoring each other. But what we've done is in those chapter breaks, we've removed 1 Corinthians 13, and what have we made that? The marriage vows chapter. 1 Corinthians 13 is love. Love is patient, love is kind. Do you know that whole section of scripture is sandwiched in a whole conversation about spiritual gifts and the body of Christ? That is not specifically addressing marriage. Is it important to marriage? Absolutely. But that whole section is talking about spiritual gifts and the importance that they reflect the love of God. So as you get to know yourself, as you get to understand your spiritual gifts, as you understand the spiritual gifts of others, keep in mind that all of it is deeply, deeply grounded in the love of God. However you exercise those gifts, exercise them with the love of God. We were in South Africa last year, went with a group of people, 
And even things like, we had a, one gal in particular was having a hard time on the trip. Um, but she's kind of an artisan. Her, everything she kind of looks at, she, she's an amazing photographer. Her eye and everything bends toward artistry. And she was having a hard time connecting with some of the people, et cetera. And it was really interesting. We took some time with the kids and we did some crafts. And it was so interesting to watch her gifts show up and watch the kids so drawn to her. They were making all kinds of stuff, things I'm no good at. And, um, and it was really neat, these kids who have been marginalized and abused and mistreated in many ways. She restored to them for those hours that they were together their artistic dignity. She restored to them a part of their humanity. When she just sat and did what she was good at, they were relaxed, they were creating things, they could see what they were creating, and you could just see them coming back to life. So as you engage, you wanna see love and you wanna see life and you want this to remain grounded in those things. That is a scriptural use of your gifts. So heading out into summer, pay attention to those things, get to know yourself, honor others, and ground it all in the love of God. You have a lot to offer. It's been tragic to me as I've gotten older to see how many people don't engage their giftedness in the body of Christ. Engage your giftedness in the body of Christ. God wired you that way, and he enjoys for you to be the way that he's made you. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.